Eminem released the Slim Shady LP in 1999 and the album went multi-platinum, earning for Marshall Mathers 2 Grammy Awards and 4 MTV Video Music Awards. After Eminem climbed to the top of the Billboard charts with his tracks The Way I Am, Without Me, Stan, Not Afraid, Cleaning Out My Closet and everybody's least favorite track, Ass Like That, Marshall Mathers would welcome his daughter Haley Jade Scott with girlfriend Kim Ann Scott. After Eminem worked his way through the Detroit underground rap scene, blowing away many a spectator for him being white, there was the lawsuit with his mother, there was the lawsuit where he attacked a man who was kissing his ex-wife, he also held hands with Elton John. Then there was D12, there was 8 Mile, he also discovered 50 Cent and promoted him heavily. And then for himself, well he kind of fell off the wagon. He became addicted to prescription drugs and it nearly cost him his life. But then we got the albums Relapse and Recovery and he took the world by storm again as a rap god. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCredden and welcome to After They're Famous, documenting the life and career of celebrities after their initial launch to fame. Here for you on After They Are Famous. Now we already did a Before They Are Famous on Eminem, but I realized there was so much more to tell. So that's why we're doing a follow up here on After They Are Famous, much like we did with Dr. Dre. Typically on this series, I do people whose careers kind of fizzled out or they went cray cray. Eminem, he is a god. And uh, that's why we gotta keep telling this story. As always, be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want me to talk about next. Wow, that was all done in one take. After two years of working with Dre, Eminem released the Slim Shady LP, which became an instant success and went on to sell over 3 million copies. Now I in fact was one of those white suburban kids who got his hands on this album, and then when I broke it, I went and bought it again. And then when it came out on iTunes, I bought it again. Cause you just can't get enough, it was really good, it still is. In the time from when Marshall Mathers first met with Dr. Dre, he went from being an unemployed minimum wage cook, to being a global sensation. Then all of a sudden, well, he decided to marry his high school sweetheart, Kim, and the two, well, they had a little daughter to take care of, and now they had the money to do so properly. Following the success of the Slim Shady LP, Eminem got to work on the Marshall Mathers LP, and when this dropped in the summer of 2001, well, Eminem had unintentionally made rap mainstream. His lyrics were boycotted by religious groups, suburban parents, the LGBT community, and he picked on practically everyone in pop culture. It seemed to be a situation where it was him versus the world, with the exception of Marilyn Manson. He seemed to really like that dude. Marshall Mathers LP sold over 19 million copies worldwide and it won a Grammy for Best Rap Album. Now with mainstream media not understanding that Eminem or Slim Shady were creations of Marshall Mathers lyrical genius, he decided he would do something a little different. And that's when he performed at the 2001 Grammys with no other than Elton John. Marshall's career it was red hot, but his personal relationships they were falling apart. He had called it quits to his marriage to Kim and she had attempted suicide but later came up with a much better idea which was to sue Eminem for his track Kim. And if you listen to that thing, well, she had a strong argument. Also, Marshall's mother, she was looking for some money for his track Cleaning Out My Closet and she sued him for $10 million. Now she was only awarded 25,000 bucks and then after lawyer fees, well she only walked away with $1,600. <sighs> this there was 8 Mile which was loosely based on Eminem's story growing up and since I've done his before they were famous I can tell you there are a lot of parallels. Now while filming this he was operating sober, something he hadn't done in recent years. The lengthy shooting schedule had him on set 16 hours a day. Between takes he would write tracks including Lose Yourself but he wasn't always that productive. He was battling insomnia. He was given his first taste of prescription medication popping back Ambien which allowed him to finally get some sleep. The Eminem show was released in May 2002, it was another success, reaching number one on the charts and selling over 1.3 million copies during its first full week. Throughout this catalog, no Eminem, he has picked a feud with many a celebrity, but it was his track Just Lose It that had a few Hollywood insiders saying, uh, Eminem, you've gone too far. In the song, Eminem raps about Michael Jackson and even dresses up as him in the video. Now Stevie Wonder of all people, he described it as Eminem kicking a man while he's down and uh, he called the whole thing bullshit. But how did Stevie Wonder even know, really? By the way, Eminem wrote the hook for that song in a total of 30 seconds. This time Eminem caught wind of another rapper who had recently been shot, including taking a bullet to the face. He was pushing mixtapes and putting successful rappers on blast, which caught M's attention. Let's take a look at a clip from 50 Cent's Before They're Famous. 
Eminem then flew 50 Cent to Los Angeles to meet with him and Dr. Dre, and they signed him for a $1 million deal. Homie, I'm a fan, and I just started, like, I think I started, like, bumping out songs and lyrics, kind of on some fan <laughs> He was like, oh, I'm telling you, this is it. I was kind of wondering, like, does this guy like me? Then 50 Cent dropped No Mercy, No Fear, and finally, Get Rich or Die Trying. Now with Eminem experiencing more success than he could ever imagine, well he decided to give back to his boys that he came up with, the fellas in D12. They got together to pump out some new material. In that group you've got his longtime BBF, Proof, there's Kaniva, Swifty McVeigh, and of course everyone's favorite, Bizarre. Continued to make headlines with stories of the Secret Service launching an investigation after his lyrics were interpreted as death threats against the then president. President George W. Bush. Eminem put out a greatest hits with Curtain Call and announced that he was going to take some time off from his rap career. Unknown to most, it was his drug addiction that had him a little lost, or very lost. And during his hiatus from music, there were few spottings of Eminem outside of his Detroit mansion. When people did see him, well, he was unrecognizable. Due to a massive weight gain, eventually his dependence and overindulgence in Vicodin, Xanax, and Valium, well, it led to his hospitalization. In December of 2007, he overdosed and collapsed in the bathroom of his home. Which is probably not the way he would ever have wanted to go. Sounds a whole lot to me like Elvis. If I would have got to the hospital two hours later, that would have been it. Because my organs, everything, my kidneys, everything were failing. Everything was shutting down. The road to recovery was a long one. He reached out to an old friend, Elton John, who mentored him for 18 months while he kicked his addiction. He focused on running to get himself back in shape, stating that it's never cool to be out of breath, especially for that of a rapper. <clears throat> I'm surprised I can do these videos. Sometimes it's a little much. He released his first album of new music in five years, Relapse, back in 2009, featuring the singles Crack a Bottle and Beautiful. The next year, he released Recovery with the singles Not Afraid, Love the Way You Lie, and Spacebound, which starred Sasha Gray in the video. Also done it before they were famous on Sasha Gray. Yeah, I do a lot of these videos. For Eminem's hard work, he picked up a Grammy Award for Best Rap Album and followed this up with the Marshall Mathers LP2 in 2013. And the rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is After They Are Famous. My name is Mike McCredden. Thanks for checking out my personal channel. I do all sorts of celebrity bios on here. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want to hear about next. I got a feeling someone's going to suggest Elvis. So, yeah, I'm going to film that later today. I'll see you guys in another video.